everyone. Welcome to Avaya's Overcoming PTSD Curriculum. I'm Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for joining us. Our fellow teacher, Sherry Doyen, is here to talk with us today about PTSD from the quantum illness or superhero. Having endured and survived physical, mental, and sexual abuse as a young girl, Sherry has made it her life's mission to help other survivors of childhood trauma untangle their stories and move into a life where they can thrive. Sherry is an advocate, a healer, an author, and the founder of Quantum Therapeutics, a new approach to confronting PTSD and the lingering effects of trauma. Thank you so much for being here with us, Sherry. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful. Yeah, I'm so excited to dive into this. And obviously, you you know you have a a very um, traumatic past that you've gone through, and and I'm just so excited that you're you know you're here to share with us because I know so many people watching right now have had similar stories, traumatic pasts, and it's just so great to have you here. Thank you, thank you. I um, it's been quite a journey, and I'm I feel like that's why I'm here because mm-hmm. I found my way out. Yeah. And uh, I spent years, 30 years in therapy. Wow. And, you know, as with so many people who have PTSD, especially, you know, um, compounded like that, you know, their body gets very ill. So I had reached a point, I had two really huge pivotal moments, right, in my traditional therapy years. I, my final psychiatrist says to me, he says, hey, Sherry, I don't know how to help you any further. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, I don't know, but all I can say is you're not in there. Mm. Right? And I said, okay, well, um, if I'm not in here, where am I? And he said, I don't know. Right? And that became a, a quest for me. It's like, if I'm not in here, where am I, right? And if I'm not in here, how can I be living consciously, right? It's like trying to drive your car from over there, Mm -hmm. right? And that's a piece that I've really found with my clients as we move forward is that disassociation piece is a very literal thing, right? It's our astral body separating from our physical body, right? That means we're not thinking clearly. We're in overwhelm. We're in anxiety. We're in a state of absolute distress. And for me, eventually, my body was dying. Like, I was in seizures. I was, you know, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. I wasn't sleeping. It was just one thing after the other. And finally, this doctor said to me, I was at a MS clinic. They thought I had MS. Hours of testing. And he's like, "Um, I can't find anything the matter with you. He said, but your body is in great distress. Right? And he said, all I can tell you is stress kills people every day. You better figure out something different, right? That's when I really, you know, started studying with Chopra, and um, which was an amazing journey. That quantum physics background was really good for me because I was like, well, what are the actions? There has to be actions, right? There has to be actions. If I'm not in my body, I had to choose to get out, and then what? And then one, and that became kind of my quest because, you know, one thing I find is that people with PTSD are some of the most amazingly brilliant, magical people I have ever met, right? Like they're very gifted and it's quantum action that they're taking. Right. If you study astral travel, this was another piece, right? I'm in this astral travel class. I'm feeling nothing, right? Like, it's like life is the same perspective for me as it always was until she brought us back to our bodies. And I was like, 
are you kidding me right now? Like, I don't know that I've ever felt that feeling, right? My first um, time out of my body, I was six months old. And my father almost killed me that day, right? So that action of separating was just a very natural thing for me. Mm -hmm. So if you're out, it's not like you're just going to stay there after a while, right? So a kid's out of their body. They're, they just known their body for a half a second. So they're out of their body. They look down and they're like, I'm going to tie a loop around that because I have to get up and have breakfast with these people tomorrow. Mm. Right. Hence all the holes that people with PTSD have in their memory. Right. So as I started working with people and I got out and I was like, well, can this be a duplicate pro process? Can, can I actually, guide people to consciously get out of their bodies and retrace their steps and go back and retrieve that information. Mm. Right? Yeah. Because a flashback is that just unconsciously, right? They're there, right? That's literally a quantum jump, right? A flashback is a quantum jump. That's even um, more literal and more molecular than an astral travel. Right? Mm -hmm. Got it. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when we get, when we actually jump back, um, we can interact with that information and with that child version that's literally trapped there. and unify those molecules and bring them back to this time and this space. Mm -hmm. Now what's interesting, that's like a cyst on your timeline, right? Most of my clients are, many, many have cysts through their body as well, right? Because the layers of existence mimic each other all the way down to the solid, so. It's pretty interesting the changes that happen very rapidly. Another amazing piece, right, is that our body is, what, 68% water? So, Sherry, can you just clarify for people who are not familiar with just really like the language, like what is astral travel specifically? I know there's a lot of people that have right, had the experience of dissociating from their bodies in a traumatic experience, but what, what does that mean? What is astral travel? Astral travel is the conscious act of leaving your body and being able to um, cast your energy somewhere else, right? So, um, and quantum jumping is a much more literal version of that. Now, there were um, studies around the fact that our astral body actually has weight. Right. So when we think about that, you know, because they were starting to realize that even even outside of the liquids that we lose when we pass, there was a discrepancy in weight. Right. So could it be possible that in these loops, there are trapped molecules of ourself there? Mm. Right. So these fra these fragmentations, I find to be very literal. Right. So. For myself, I felt like my life force was so diminished that I could hardly maneuver my body, right? And I find that with so many of my clients, it was like, oh my gosh, my legs are heavy, my body's heavy, right? And as we go back and retrieve these molecules and bring them back, it's almost instantly they start feeling wholeness. Right. I had a young woman the other day who had um, truly alternate personalities like so that big of severance from the PTSD. And she actually said to me the other day, you know, I feel I feel grown up. Right. Finally, she said, I finally feel all here and all grown up. 
And I, I, I think that is the beauty of um, the QT matrix. And it's so direct and virtually painless, right? Because when we go in there, we're going in there as an adult, right? And we're to giving that child. Because another thing that I think that I've really found in myself and people is that we as adults have made this band-aid version, right, of this child's experience. And there's a big discrepancy there. Right. Because this child was in absolute distress and for whatever reason, however they embedded that information. Right. Is not what the adult is operating with. And that is their truth. So when we go in, we truly can insert in time. Neutral. To slightly uplifting to where we can bring those stories into congruence. Right. And as that happens, there's an instant calm in the body as well. You know, the process, we really focus also on um, the way the words are really embedded mm. and programmed from the get go. Um, Ayurveda says those first seven years hold, you know, our default perspective on life. Mm. Right. So if, and, you know, now when I was studying with Chopra, I really did get to a point where, because I was studying to teach mindfulness for him, right? And I really did reach a point where I was like, but that's not changing. The fact that I'm being triggered and catapulted back, right? Mm. So, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was just curious, like, what do you mean, like, when you're ta when in the title of your talk today, you talk about superhero or illness? What does that What does that mean to you? What What's that? Um... Because I find that most of what the world claims to be mental illness are are these um, gifts that we were we had access to stay alive, right? And they're kind of running amok, right? Because they're everything is so unconscious. Right. And, I, and not only are we hurting ourselves, we're hurting other people because we don't even acknowledge that we're doing it. Right. I mean, disassociation is an unconscious act of leaving our body. It's an unconscious out of body experience. Right. So if we can start turning those actions and really understanding what we're what we're doing and the amount of information. Right. Science says we're we're taking in 400 billion bits, bits of information every second. And the human brain is operating on 100. I think people who have PTSD have a lot of information coming in. Right? Okay. So it becomes about discerning it. And what do we do with it? Right? You know, what is schizophrenia? Like I'm working with a, a young man right now that is struggling and has been labeled with schizophrenia for years. I'm like, I can see what he sees, mm -hmm. right? But if fear's involved in that because it's not normal and the crazy word is mixed into all that, right? He's scared to death. Right? So each time we interact and we start putting him back together, you know, another piece I find is that we have this, this hardware that has been um, deprived of nutrition, of life force, of everything. It has stopped developing and, and it has been deteriorating for a long time. And then we've got this mass of 2020 information coming in, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. If we were a 1979 computer, either we're going to reject that information or we're going to crash. Got it. That's what I see PTSD as. Right? So a lot of my work is, especially in the beginning, is about upgrading that hardware so that we can not be afraid of what we're bringing in and start making it useful because we're here for a reason. So can you give it some examples of how people can start upgrading their hardware? Like what does that, what does that look like for the person watching right now who's never maybe experienced um, 
right? This, this quantum jumping, astral travel, all that kind of stuff. How do, how do they upgrade their hardware? Yeah, truly. Um, start really understanding what you're feeling. Is what you're feeling about today? Chase the words down because normally those feelings are anchored, anchored in with words, right? And um, most people are jumping anyway, right? So when it becomes a conscious th thought, you know, how old is that feeling? How old do I feel right now? Where am I, right? Now, the challenge in doing it alone is keeping the separation because we're used to going back and being the kid again. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when we're doing it alone, I don't claim to ever heal anyone. I'm a really good guide, right? So is to keep that separation so that you don't get sucked back into the emotion of the moment. Got it. Right? Because that's a flashback, mm -hmm. right? So like once people could, you know, potentially start going back in order to like update that system, like you're talking about, like what, what comes after that, you know, they need to be able to, like you said, um, keep the two separate as they're a, an adult life, you know, not living the child's life again, but like, how do you like any other like tips or tools it, that you can, it comes in, right? Like, so when, when, when we actually go back through the matrix and we, we quantum jump somebody, that information comes in, right? So then it becomes about learning how to live differently and not having PTSD anymore, right? Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. So I guess like what, like if people watching right now are wondering, okay, so how do, how do they learn to live differently? What's an example or something they could start practicing? Well, truly, they should jump on my website, front page. There's um, a free gift to sneak peek to my, the first module of my program called Are You In Your Body? Mm -hmm. Because discerning that, first of all, is game changer, mm -hmm. right? Because we have spent most of our lives out, like, and popping in, right? So it is a completely upside down way to live, right? And even after years of just constant practice, that's a thought for me. And that's different than being grounded, okay. right? And let me tell you, over my years, I had so many healers say, I'm putting you back in your body. That didn't change anything, right? We have to learn how, our, how this system works because we are amazingly magical people right? And if we're not conscious of, um, how, what, of what we're creating out front, we're just going to create the same thing over and over again. Right. Right. So, you know, through the, through the process I've developed through the years, I've just kind of rolled up together what took me 40 years to, to, you know, culminating in the QT matrix which is a 90 day, like, let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's go back very, very deliberately. Let's follow these cycles back. Now what's beautiful, we go back to the root of a cycle of a word or, or a feeling is watching it unwind through time. Right. And literally in that moment, we go from a 10 to a two. Mm. Right. Can you give an example of, of a word since you mentioned that a couple of times, right? Like following the word, like what, like, has there been a word or words that have really like, are these like trigger words, like things that, that trigger the past for people? It's usually emotional words like, um, disrespect, you know, a lot of times people have used big um, umbrella words like fear. I'm afraid. Right. It's like, what else, what else is in there? Right. Are you, um, are you um, feeling disrespected? Are you feeling um, frustrated? Are you angry? What, what all is wrapped up in that? Because each one of those words has um, a story that goes with it for us, right? So we have to find out where they're embedded in time so that we can 
release him and allow him to go. Just respect is huge, right? Trust. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what I find most often is we bottom line, that trust thing is back to us because we turned off our intuition a long time ago, right? Not every person that experiences trauma gets PTSD, right? But the ones that true that do are usually highly sensitive, right? Um, amazingly brilliant people, right? I can walk into the shelter and say, how many of you loop? Right? They know it. How many of you leave your body? Right? How many of you travel through time? Right? They all know they do it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just they don't know how to not do it. Yeah. Got right? It. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to use it. Right? I'm like, if you can do that on a regular basis, we can use that, what you're already doing, and retrace it and untangle it. Mm. So that your energy isn't all flowing backwards. Right? Because it's like we build life and then it crashes. And then we build life and then it crashes because we don't have the foundational support to hold it up. Mm -hmm. We're operating from up here. Right? Got it. Um so, how, how can, like you mentioned intuition um, and trust, and I know that it tends to be a big, obviously a big issue for people who have PTSD and past trauma is not trusting themselves, not trusting others. Like any like uh, suggestions on how one might be able to harness the power of their intuition, start figuring out when it's right speaking to them by whatever language? I really, really think that listening, it, it needs to come from inside your body. Right, because we're hearing so much and everything is outside of us. Right? Start asking questions. Ask the questions. Back to the old age, ask and you shall receive. Ask the questions. Right? Is this in my highest and best? Right? What do I need to do right now? Right? And listen to our bodies because they know everything. Right? And then we're so used to having all of our awareness out there. This is our biggest antenna, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that many of us, right, we turned off our intuition because we had to get up the next day and be in that same house. Even though every red flag was going off, even though we knew what was gonna happen maybe tomorrow, even though we were still there, right? And we weren't heard, right? But today you can hear, today is a new day, right? Mm -hmm. I think, um, for myself and a lot of clients is like getting in nature as well, right? Getting outside in nature without your phone and start asking some questions, right? So I feel like when we're out, out in nature, the only out of the sink in nature is you, mm -hmm. right? And energy is always trying to find balance, right? Mm, that's I think also if we can can think that if we can move out of that state of fear and into a state of curiosity, like, why did I do that? You know, I find that in Buddhism, you know, they talk about the, the um, detaching from emotion and we've been taught to live there, right? So if we can understand, hmm, why would I have chosen to do that? Right? We can start creating some of that space for us to see ourselves clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, only, the only thing we can change is us. Mm hmm And that's a, that's a big lesson in and of itself, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that if we can think, okay, you know, our journey is to be able to fit through the eye of that needle, right? That's integrity. That's personal responsibility, you know? And Gandhi calls that happiness, mm. right? When what we think and what we say and what we do are in harmony, right? And um, until that point, you know, we're going to be 
vacillating and feeling uncomfortable and reaching outside of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think it really com- becomes about thinking, all right, from that place of curiosity, what can I change today? Right? And instead of he did this to me, hmm, what could I have done differently? Right. Yes. Yeah, that's so powerful. I, I, I always love um, taking it back to personal responsibility because without that, it's it, like, I don't know that anyone can get out of traumatic childhoods and, and live an empowered life without it. It just, it's like, I don't know. It's, no. you've got to do it. That's where the power is to me. That's my experience is that's where the power is, is when I can recognize, yeah, all this stuff happened and it was just disgusting and horrible. And right now I can choose to change me and I might need help, right? I need help from others or, you know, a community and all of that. And right. It's up to me to, to get that help to, to be able to change. So I love that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, Mr. Chopra said to me one time, you know, I was saying, you know, hey, like I get what you're saying, this whole mindful stuff, but, you know, I didn't choose all that, you know, and he said, but when was the last time you were actually hurt? I mean, I was like 17. Mm -hmm. He goes, and how old are you today? Mm And he goes, and who, who, who tortured you for those years? Wow. I was just like, okay. Mm. But at the same time, I didn't have the tools to change it. Yeah. Right? That's what I love about the matrix is because it's all about teaching you how to work you. Right? How your information is coming in. How your gifts work. Right. It's like taking Harry Potter and like putting him in the muggle house and you know, he's doing magic all willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Right? We're doing that all the time. Right. In the quantum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. We, I mean, like we have to have the tools and the help in order to, to make it, I, at least I think it seems to be that most people need the tools and the help in order to overcome something like PTSD. Um, and I just have the utmost compassion for everyone who is dealing with it. I'm just so glad you're all here because this is right. This is you getting your help, you know, and I'm, that's just awesome. Yeah. It's like a maze of funny, you know, funny mirrors. What do you call those? The, those distorted yeah. mirrors. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to see it yourself. Right. I mean, it's really hard sometimes when you're sitting in there to, to know which part of it is true. Right. When they say memory, like, is, is, you know, always built from our perspective of our default, mm-hmm. right? We can have five people in the same room having the same exact experience and they're going to tell a completely different story, right? So I find that, you know, finding our truth through that is another big piece because then blame goes away. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been really, really interesting. And I'm just so delighted to, you know, dive into this topic. And I hope everyone watching has, you know, gotten a lot out of this and and looking at new ways of, yeah, what does it mean to dissociate? And what's, you know, how can you, like you said, right, go back to those times to really um, upgrade. Yeah, and not be ill. Yeah. To be like, hey, I'm really a genius. Like, let me figure out how to operate. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Will you share a little bit more about your free gift? So you mentioned it a couple minutes ago, but everyone watching, there is a button below that um, links over to Sherry's site that you can grab this gift. So anything more you could share about that? Yeah, it's called Are You in Your Body? And I've developed an, an exercise that is just kind of the found one of the foundational pieces people get first off when they when they start playing in my bubble because. It's an exercise on really walking you through your bo- into your body and creating distinctions on when you're in and when you're out and what that feels like, what it feels like to be in your body, you know, and, and as you, as the more you utilize that, hmm, how is that feeling different and more comfortable too, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and expansive. So yeah, it's, um, it was a game changer for me. You know, to me, spirit is simple. Spirit is childlike. It's a very simple thing, you know, 
but we have to cr start turning that reaction into an action, right? Mm -hmm. PTSD, we're living in constant reaction, right? And if we're not in our bodies, we're not going to fix it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Are mm -hmm. there any, any last insights, anything else you want to share before we wrap up? PTSD is not a life sentence. It is not a life sentence, right? And you're not ill and you're not crazy, right? I think that um, I, every person I've met has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant, right? And have a lot of those what, <clears throat> if you layer it over, right, what the spiritual gifts or psychic abilities, like they are blazed open, just gathering tons of information. And you know, the world needs you. You're here for a reason. You're here right now in this time for a reason, right? And uh, let's activate you and get you moving forward. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Sherry. I really appreciate you doing this with us today. Thank you. I appreciate it too. Absolutely. And everyone who's watching or listening right now, we just so appreciate you being here for showing up for yourself on your journey. And, you know, this, I say this many times, but this is, this is like the first step. You've got to show up for yourself and, and here you are. So, so excited that you're here and we'll see you again real soon. Take care.